premium compact car. If that concept means anything to you, then it's the car we look at here, Audi's A3 Sportback, that might well come to mind. True to the brand's Volsprung Duck technique philosophy, this model once again aims to set fresh standards, incorporating a completely digitalized interior and cutting edge infotainment, plus more unique light signatures, powerful engines, and a suite of innovative assistance systems enveloped in a completely redesigned yet immediately recognizable body. The result is a car that should show you just how far things have recently progressed in this segment. Everything about this car is designed to deliver on the concept of a Volkswagen Golf with just a touch more polish and the driving experience it offers is no exception. Now if you're an A3 regular or you're a graduate from a Golf, you'll find that this Audi now has even more of the mature drive dynamics that you'll be looking for, helped by a fully digital at the wheel experience and the optional embellishment of hybrid power and self-driving tech. Differences with this Mark IV design initially seem quite subtle. Uh, they're primarily centered around slightly sharper steering and handling, which is now a little more responsive. That's thanks to a wider track and to the introduction of a modular dynamic handling control system, which, based on steering movements, predictively coordinates interplay between all the car's dynamic systems, uh, rather like a conductor with an orchestra, so the car can always be one step ahead of the drive inputs that you want to make. As before, you'll need to avoid the lowest powered petrol and diesel variants if you want the brand's suppler and more sophisticated multi-link rear suspension setup. Ah yes, engines, well, they've evolved too. The two volume petrol units, 110 PS, one liter, three cylinder, and the 150 PS, 1.5 liter, four cylinder power plant we're trying here, both get Audi's latest mild hybrid MHEV electrified tech, uh, provided you've ordered them with the seven speed S-Tronic auto transmission that most A3 folks seem to want. That MHEV setup sees an integrated 48 volt BAS, belt alternator starter generator powering a 12 volt main electrical setup in which a 48 volt compact lithium ion battery in the boot stores energy harvested by a KERS kinetic energy recovery system. The resulting WLTP rated efficiency improvements aren't massive, but they do enable fuel and CO2 readings to remain very competitive. A typical 35 TFSI S-Tronic variant manages up to 50.4 mpg and up to 128 grams per kilometer of CO2. If you don't care about friends of the earth, uh, you can do better with the uh, alternative conventional 30 TDI diesel model, of course, uh, that now develops 116 PS and it uses a larger, more efficient two litre unit with the brand's latest twin dosing tech. There is also a 150 PS two litre 35 TDI model option. The better eco-minded alternative though is the 40 TFSI E plug-in hybrid, which mates a 150 PS 1.4 litre TSI petrol engine to a six-speed DSG auto gearbox. The combination works with an 85 kilowatt electric motor powered by a 13 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery, which when it's fully charged can offer a WLTP rated all electric driving range of up to 41 miles. If you prioritize performance, you're more likely to be drawn to the S3 Quattro hot hatch, which as before uses a 310 PS 2 liter TFSI turbo petrol unit uh, that's now exclusively mated to S-Tronic paddle shift automatic transmission. Audi talks of the way that this fourth generation A3 styling has been revolutionized. And that's something that designer Imo Redeker is very enthusiastic about. Now these days, the range is primarily based around this five door sport back body shape. Uh, the only other option is a saloon and that has been given a rather more athletic stance and a slight size increase this time around. The front end has a good deal more overtaking presence thanks to sculpted angular full LED headlamps with lighting signatures that reflect the trim level chosen. Here two vertical LED lines are meant to emphasize uh, S-line sportiness. So an evolved exterior, but what's it like inside? Well, unlocking the car can now be activated by your smartphone if you happen to have an Android device and you pay extra for the optional Audi Connect key. In the past, the cabin experience is what sold A3s. 
Up front, there's a more immersive style of ergonomic design this time around in the way that these air vents combine with the instrument binnacle and the manner in which the central screen and the redesigned climate controls just below have been canted towards the driver. Now, a lot of effort has gone into visually emphasize uh, both the width and the spaciousness of this cabin, most notably with uh, precise horizontal lines and surfaces. Not all of it is smoke and mirrors. Uh, the seats have been set a little lower to improve headroom. Uh, plus, there is also slightly more shoulder room too. And you're gonna really like the quality and the classy design on show here. Things like the hexagonal contrast stitching on the dash top and this striking line of vents on the passenger side here with this smart curved trim strip below. Now earlier, we mentioned the screens. Here they represent what Audi calls a new level of digital technology. This 10.25 inch virtual cockpit instrument binnacle display is now standardized and it works in concert with this 10.1 inch MMI Navigation Plus center stack monitor. Now this central screen is now based on an MIB3 modular infotainment platform offering 10 times the computing power of the previous setup and it has a vastly improved intuitive voice control system. Plus, this MMI system is permanently connected to the internet with high-speed access via an embedded eSIM, which means you can create in the car a Wi-Fi hotspot and access things like online music streaming, uh, online traffic information, and hybrid radio. Time to take a seat in the rear. Now, given that the 1.43 metre height and 2.64 metre wheelbase dimensions of this Mark IV model are unchanged over the previous generation design, we weren't expecting too much here. As with most cars in this segment, it's not particularly spacious in the back. Uh, you'd love to find the kind of sliding reclining bench that you can have in a comparable Audi Q3 SUV, but that sort of thing doesn't tend to feature on a conventional hatch. And what's on offer here is directly comparable to what uh, you would get in either of this model's two closest premium badge segment rivals, the BMW 1 Series and the Mercedes A-Class. Finally, let's have a look in the boot. Uh, it's 380 litres in size, as before. If you need room for longer items, you better have avoided base Technic trim because it's only above that level that you get this 40-20-40 split rear backrest, uh, the centre part of which can be pushed forward between a couple of rear seated passengers uh, so you can easily carry long items like skis. Uh, push the rear bench uh, fully flat and you'll have up to 1,200 litres of room to play with. In the search for a compact car that's also a premium purchase, there are probably more charismatic choices than the Audi A3, but we think there are a few better ones. Light in bulk, heavy in technology, it's a logical evolution of a breed that's long been one of Britain's favourite company cars. This improved version might look little different at first glance, but it'll feel so once you get to grips with the fresh digitalized cockpit with its two sophisticated screens. Otherwise, things are much as before, which means that there's a lot to like. Ultimately, if you're attracted to this car, you're still likely to feel that there's nothing quite like this Audi. Cool, classless, and clever, it remains desirably definitive.